You mentioned uh, Wilfred Owen there, and uh, I mean, there's been a lot of attention paid to the war poets mm. and obviously the war uh, artists as well. And there's a significant Irish influence there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, there's some wonderful Irish war poetry. Um, and for years, it's it's kind of been hidden. Uh, but Francis Ledwidge, I mean, a pastoral poet from Slane, uh, a county meet. I mean, he's a gift for if you want the Irish experience of the war. He's a nationalist. He's a socialist. Um, he's a romantic. Um, and in the end, he, he knows some of the guys who are out in 1916, uh, but he joins up because he thinks it's the right thing to do, and also possibly because he was on the rebound and a failed love affair. So again, these are mixed motives, but he writes wonderful poetry when he gets, when he gets there. Um, uh, and he says at one stage, you know, a soldier's grave is greater than a poet's. And we're not supposed to believe that, you know. Um, so he's engaged. Uh, now, on the artist side, there are two very important Irish artists who become official war artists. Uh, one is the Dublin-born Protestant William Orpen, and the other is a Belfast-born Catholic, he's absolutely perfect, uh, John Lavery. Uh, and Orpen goes to France in 1917, or the end of 1916, um, and in fact paints the Somme battlefield a year afterwards. The Germans have withdrawn from this area, um, and he paints these incredibly beautiful pastoral scenes, sunlit scenes, um, and just occasionally uh, the shock will come in when there's be a dead Germans in the trench, there'll be uh, pictures of the human cost for this. Uh, and then he paints pictures of the soldiers involved. He's in intense sympathy for the men involved and slightly uh, envious of them because he's not doing this. I mean, he says, I mean, he says himself, he was too much of a coward to do this thing, but he just, uh, uh, he, has, he has a great admiration for these and he paints them. And then he paints some strange sort of mystical fantasy uh, pictures towards the end of the war, um, which aren't, I think, what the British War Office wanted their official war artists to, to uh, um, um, paint, including an extraordinary painting uh, about Armistice Night in Amiens, which is a kind of bacchanalian frenzy with drunks and naked women and you know just awful kind of everything's hair let down um, uh, uh, kind of notion uh, nothing about the nobility or grandeur uh, just uh, a kind of uh, um, you know high excitement